work on berry picking probably began right after La Millennium, which was in the year 2000. We said, okay, what's next? And what was next that was going to be uh, different from La Millennium is that we would invite a group of consigners to bring their animals to the farm and offer them, uh, offer them for sale. We envisioned it as an opportunity to, to share the, the animals that we, uh, that we have produced to, to, again, showcase our breeding program, as we've said, uh, but also to bring uh, people together from all over the country uh, to celebrate the joy that we, uh, that we share in, uh, in raising llamas. The concept of berry picking really was developed by Dale, and obvious, it's obvious what it is with the uh, uh, fruit, uh, the strawberry, and our logo and it was an idea of picking from the produce uh, of Berry Acres, and that's how we got the name Berry Bank. Well, actually, uh, mo most of the sales used to be private treaty type sales. The, um, the advantage of a, of a production sale or an auction is that you uh, do have an opportunity, usually they include consigners, so in one place you have the opportunity to see uh, a lot of different animals, uh, take your pick, make comparisons, see what you think would fit your breeding program, and they're all offered under one tent. Um, and of course, as I mentioned before, there's always that notion that, whoa, there might be that, that one animal that j goes for a whole lot less than it's worth, and I can just be there and jump on that price. The, the top seller, uh, the top selling female, of course, Radiance uh, was a... Um, she was a favorite from the beginning. A, a great favorite of ours, a, a wonderful investment uh, because of, uh, you know, her mother, Renaissance, is an extraordinary animal, uh, her father's whist, and, uh, you know, she went to, uh, to great, great friends of ours who we know will enjoy having her, so, so it's great to share um, you know, share our successes in that way. Well, they come from, uh, the owners of llamas come from every walk of life, every occupation, and one of the beauties of having the common denominator of llamas is the joy of meeting those people and having fun, and that's one of the reasons we did what we did at berry picking and had entertainment and had an opportunity for a lot of these people to meet each other that I uh, haven't met before, but they've got a lot to talk about because they have something in common, and that is the uh, llama. In addition to enjoying our farm and enjoying llamas, we, we do um, like to give a party. Um, and so that is a, a big part of, of berry picking that we, in view, that we view the entire weekend as a as a celebration we want to have a party atmosphere we want people to enjoy themselves enjoy our farm and most of all enjoy each other in addition to enjoying an, uh, the animals that we love the, the weather was uh, really contrasting with la millennium la millennium was uh, a uh, very beautiful june weekend but very hot and very humid, and that had a material effect on stress on the animals and uh, stress on people. It got hot in the tent, and uh, you know this year with berry picking, it was almost the opposite: cooler weather. And you know between uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we got about six inches of rain, and we had a lot of mud to contend with. Uh, but it really didn't hurt the sale at all and we I mean we had tents to uh, protect ourselves and fortunately the sun came out at the right times when we needed to have people outside for whatever whether previewing animals or at a cocktail party that we had behind our house. It gave our groomers uh, a lot of extra work because prior to the, the real downpour that we had on uh, Thursday and then on Friday the animals just looked superb and of course uh, the rain was just devastating, rain and mud, and so they basically had to s almost start over again with some animals. So it was a tremendous amount of work for the groomers, um, and uh, 
people, uh, I've got to say, were very good sports and remained in good spirits despite the rain. Uh, some of them had, had a good long trudge to, to get here, but um, they were intent on having a good time, and, and that's, the, that's the great uh, spirit of, of the whole event that made us feel that, uh, well, okay, we can get through this and we'll, we'll survive, even though it was certainly not the weather we would have chosen. purposes in having a production sale is to showcase our breeding program um, and also to give other people, our consigners, a chance to, uh, to showcase their breeding programs as well. We've done it also without uh, regard to country of origin. We have uh, uh, herd sires that we've uh, developed in our breeding program over the years that come, uh, their heritage is South America, but many different uh, countries, whether it's Chile or Peru, uh, Argentina, um, all of these uh, 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 elements come into our breeding program. You have to be a bit of a risk taker, a, a gambler, if you will, to invest in livestock. Uh, but I think that's part of the fascination with it. Uh, always trying to to have the odds be in your favor. Always try to uh, to make a decision that will that will be uh, be successful and and of course um, you're not always uh, successful but that's part of the challenge and fortunately um, we think that uh, for the most part we have made some some wise decisions in terms of our breeding program and so uh, what we see in our pastures uh, is, is, uh, is the proof of that and if other people like those animals and we, uh, we create a demand for them uh, then we, we feel we've been successful. But the proof is always in the next generation. That's part of the, the fun of breeding. And so far we've been very lucky. Our eye, I guess, has been good. Uh, we, uh, we, we bought Silver Peru, uh, whose offspring in the La Millennium sale were very popular and sold for a lot of money. Uh, and in this particular sale, berry picking, a lot of Quist uh, offspring uh, were some of the high sellers. And it, uh, we, uh, uh, you know, not every herd sire is going to all, uh, that looks good, is going to reproduce himself. So uh, it's a somewhat of a gamble, but it's also a scientific. When you look at the uh, bloodlines and examine the potential of mating uh, the herd sire to certain females that you may have in your core uh, herd. From the very beginning, we selected females that, that have uh, large, elegant stature, stretchy females that, um, with, with attention to their reproductive potential in terms of being uh, good milkers, good moms, um, and, uh, and that, that presence, that, that kind of look at me uh, attitude. So, they really, the females, although a lot of attention is given to herd sires and, and who your you know, stud males are, we really feel that a large portion of our success is due to the fact that we did make a strong investment in uh, our female foundation herd as well, and, and that has served us well. Uh, it's, it's, it's great fun. We, we love our animals. We think of uh, eat, with each season, it brings the excitement of, of new births, of uh, new animals that we're taking into the show ring, of uh, new opportunities to test our breeding program. And uh, that's, that's all great fun. Uh, and it, it's, it's a learning experience. It's a social experience. It's something that has, uh, has really been at, at the core of you know, our, our lives, our social lives. Uh, and uh, it's just you know, what we do, and we love it. Many of the animals that were um, for sale at, at berry picking have outstanding show records. They're animals that people recognized ha having seen them in the show ring. But uh, it helps market our animals. If we do well at shows, that people will be interested in buying some of the uh, bloodlines that we have built up over the years. The question does arise, um, is it hard to sell an animal? It, do you? Do you find it difficult to um, raise an animal, love it, show it, and then 
uh, sell it to someone else. Um, and there's, there's no doubt about it, that is difficult, but it is something that we have, have learned to accept, but that is, that is part of it, is, is sharing our success and sharing our joy with other people. Um, after all, someone had to sell us the animals that, that we have on our farm. Uh, they weren't all born here, so um, it is part of a progression and part of something that, that we enjoy as, as stewards of these animals, the delight that we derive from them. We, we do want to pass on to others. And, and then we, we are very, very happy when we make a, 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 good, a good match and people are enjoying the animals that, they, um, that, they, that came from our farm. And that gives us a good feeling. We um, will continue to grow. We have, you know, 30, 30 new babies on, on the way. Um, from breedings that we've we've already planned and, and we look forward to those offspring. So we'll continue to um, you know, refine our breeding program, we'll continue to buy new animals, we'll continue to try new combinations um, and uh, you know. As long as we're healthy we'll keep going. <laughs> yeah, as long as we have the energy to do this, I think the <coughs> wheels are still turning and some of us have already started saying, you know, the next time we do this, I think we should so it's obvious that there's, uh, you know, there's another sale uh, in, in the works. We just uh, aren't, <laughs> aren't quite ready to jump into that commitment today. In a, in a way, it's a little sad that, uh, you know, all the animals that we had in the show ring last fall and the, this spring, the, for the most part, they're all gone to our new homes. And we have tons of blue ribbons to show for those. And you know, it, it's sort of an empty feeling that those animals that uh, we showed uh, last spring and last fall are gone, but at the same time, we've got a whole new crop coming on and it'll be fun to uh, start from scratch and, and get them in the show ring and uh, get people looking at a whole new uh, uh, generation of animals that are uh, offspring of uh, some of the ones that uh, are no longer here. Well, it's a team effort, and you know, we have to start with the core people that work here at our farm, uh, led by Mark Zerby, our farm manager. He's, he's held the crew together. Uh, we, we just are so thankful for his energy, his work ethic, and uh, and then from there we talk about Ben Stolfus and then the team that we assembled uh, from there on down. I mean, Mark's mother works here, uh, Sheila works here. I mean, we, we could go on. Dale's mother did a lot of work on La Millennium. It just, uh, it, it's a really a team effort and you can't really single out any one person because we all worked awfully hard and uh, are very proud of the way it went. We also really appreciated the team of uh, groomers and handlers that had no idea what they were in store for when the, when the skies opened. We also appreciate the fact that many of our friends who, uh, who came with, with the offer to help, did, they were enlisted in spreading wood chips or drying off chairs or moving things, uh, helping uh, people that were stuck and so on. So uh, we can't say enough about the people who just drove up, saw a job that needed to be done, and, and just jumped right in and helped us out. Uh, that's, that's the spirit that we all share I I at shows and in our organizations, a great, you know, great volunteer organizations, and um, that just, just spilled over into, the, into our, our event, and we really appreciate the support of all those people.